Oh, God bless you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in to our Powerhouse broadcast. I want to take this opportunity to thank all our audience for uh, standing behind us all these years, you know, tuning in every week uh, to listen to our broadcast. Thank you for your support that you have given to us till uh, today. Your phone calls, uh, your letters that you've been writing are very, very, very encouraging. And I encourage you uh, not to stop, but to keep on doing what you are doing because whatever you do for Christ uh, will last. Now the house is packed. Uh, when we go to services on Sundays and on Tuesday evening, 7 p.m., and Sunday mornings, 10 o'clock, we've seen Jehovah God doing marvelous things in people's life. And it is because of your prayer and your commitment. And we're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord this very moment. Whatever you are, shall we pray, please? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father divine, I thank you so much for these beautiful audience who have recognized your anointing upon my life and have uh, respected your anointing upon my life. Because of their humility, O oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that these folks will never be the same. Whatever their hearts are yearning for, I pray that they receive in the name of Jesus. And even as your word is coming today, may it come in your power to dismantle every atrocities of the enemy in their lives. I thank you, O oh Lord, for instigating through me your undiluted word to be of a blessing to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Yes, I got it. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians 3, 13. I read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written... Cursed is everyone that hung on a tree. Amen. As you and I know, the church in Galatia was planted by Paul. Paul was an apostle. Paul was a church planter. So he goes to a place, plant churches, and appoint pastors. Or leaders. And it came to a time that he went to Galatia, presented to them the salvation message of Jesus Christ. These people got saved, delivered, filled with the Spirit of Christ. And when Paul departed, some crooks went into the church and diluted whatever Paul told them. So by the time Paul came back, these saints have gone astray, gone to a strange doctrine that wasn't from God. And he was mad at them. And he said, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you <laughs> from the truth that I gave to you. You started in the spirit. And you want to finish in the flesh. So he pointed them to the work that Jesus came to do on the cross. I've come to your home this very moment to present Jesus, our Redeemer, unto you. So I'm speaking on the subject, Jesus, our Redeemer. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to die. He let forgive. He lives and died to buy my pardon. 
an empty grave is there to prove my savior a lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives oh fear is gone and now i know yes i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he, he lives. Because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Galatians 3, 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that is hung on the tree. In those days, it was a taboo, it was a curse for anybody to be hung on the tree. So, it was armed robbers, crooks, thieves who were hung on trees. And Jesus went through this shameful situation. Why? For a purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. He became a curse. Jesus was made a curse. For your redemption and my redemption. For three hours, God took his eyes from Jesus. And he shouted, Eli, Eli, Labasa Mathani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because of you and I, Jesus became a curse. Beloved, something unique happened on the cross. And I want to show you certain things that took place on the cross for you and I. There was an exchange on the cross. Hmm. Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. The punishment that you and I owe. He became a sinner. He became a curse. In order for you and I to be forgiven. Beloved, when man forgives you he still has it in his or her subconscious the moment they see you they remember but i tell you when god forgives you he writes it off and remember no more so whatever sin you have committed i pray at this very moment, you put it all on the altar. Bring it all unto Jesus. He will save you and he will forgive you and he will remember it no more. The real forgiveness is in God. Hallelujah. Jesus was wounded on the cross. Why? That we might be healed the bible says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed beloved i go to israel every year every year i go to israel i've been to golgotha where our Savior was crucified. I know Israel very well. Fly to Tel Aviv, rent a car, drive from Tel Aviv to Dead Sea. 
I'm here today in your home to let you know that that man of Galilee, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he died on the cross because of your sins, because of my sins, and he's the only one who can forgive you from all your sins. Ha <laughs> ha, satire. Oh, praise the Lord. He was punished so that you and I will be forgiven. He was wounded that we might be healed. Before I became a Christian, I had a stomach trouble. I've told you people before. It came annually. And it's like someone has put a knife cutting my lungs. But from the one that I got saved, not going to church. I have been in church for a long time, but I was not saved. Until one day, about 30 something years ago, I met the Lord. I met Jesus. He forgave me all my sins, cleansed me, and healed me. What sickness is troubling you? What are you going through? The Lord God has the ability to heal you through the blood of Jesus. 39 stripes. He took it on the cross. He was wounded for you and I to be healed. Thank God for doctors. They are doing wonderful jobs. But sometimes they get to a point that they will say, this is above our scope. We cannot do anything about this. Go home and die. But I prophesy to you and I prophesy to you, and I prophesy to you, that you are not going to die, but you are going to declare the works of God, because you have not finished what God has assigned you to do in this life. I don't care what the doctors have told you. What I care is what Jesus came to do on the cross. There was an exchange on the cross. What exchange took place? He was wounded on the cross so that you and I will be healed. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might share his righteousness. Putting on a white hat is fine. Putting on white clothes, going to church is fine. But putting on a white hat and white clothes does not make you or don't make you righteous. Our righteousness is not in works. But our righteousness is in the sinful nature that Jesus Christ put upon himself on the cross and died. Righteousness means having a right stand with God. So we should put this hypocrisy away and be real with God and know that our righteousness is in the sinful nature that Christ Jesus put upon himself on the cross so that we become righteous. Praise God. We are sharing his righteousness because of the sins, our sins that were put on him on the cross. And Jesus was made a curse that we might receive the blessings of Abraham. Jesus, our Redeemer, he came to redeem us from the curse of the law. We were bound. We were in chains. We had no hope. We had no strength. The enemy put us in his jurisdiction. But when he died, the earth shook. Those who were dead rose up and they showed themselves to many. And the Bible says on the third day, he rose in the power of the spirit to set you and I free. From all these curses. 
Christ our Redeemer. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus died our death that we might share his life. The death that we owe, Christ came to die for us that we might have life. John 10.10 10 says the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. The devil is a bad devil and Jesus is a good Jesus. I pray today that you and I will repent from all our sins and receive Jesus into our hearts. Because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. He died our death, that we might share his life. Life in Jesus is sweet. You might have a boat, a house, big money at a bank, wonderful husband, beautiful wife and children, having all the degrees, but you could be dead in the spirit. God doesn't know you. I don't care how, many, how much millions you have at the bank. If you don't have Jesus, you are just a miserable person. I've come to your home as a prophet of God to let you know that Jesus is coming again. He came to be born as a lamb, but he's not coming as a lamb. He's coming as a judge. He's coming to judge mankind. This very moment is an acceptable time. This is an hour of salvation. If you repent and receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, what the locusts, what the palm worms, what the caterpillars and the canker worms have eaten are going to be restored into your life in the name of Jesus. So my sister, this is the hour. Turn around and come to the Lord. Hallelujah. My nephew, my daughter, my sister, my brother, come to the Lord. Fellow saints, audience who are listening to this broadcast, I'm sending this wonderful invitation to you. The Lord needs you. He wants to clothe you. He wants to change you. He wants to mold you. Hallelujah. He wants to, you know, bring you up to be who he destined you to be. Jesus Christ came to die our death. And Jesus Christ came to endure our poverty that we might share his wealth. Right now you are broke. But pride has taken over you. Right now you are poor. But you don't want to repent. And you are struggling. It's not by might. Nor power. But by my spirit. I'm inviting you to church this Sunday. When you come, I will pray for you. And the Lord God will deliver you. Even if you will listen to this carefully and, and accept these words that are coming. God will touch you in your house. I'm speaking to you directly. I could see you in the spirit. That the Lord God is bringing a change into your life. Poverty is a curse. Poverty is a curse. Poverty is not from God. See, when you get into debt, you become a slave to the debtor. He can speak to you anyhow. But I prophesy to you today that money is coming. Mama, money is coming. Sister, money is coming. Brother, money is coming coming because it is God who giveth power to get wealth. It is Jehovah God who giveth power to get wealth. Money is coming. Money is coming. I could see that poverty is running away because Jesus Christ endured our poverty on the cross that we might share his wealth. Hallelujah. There was a guy who was owing um, I think over thirty thousand dollars, and he was so much frustrated and wanted to kill himself in Long Island. Just thirty thousand dollars, he wanted to die. And somebody introduced me to him. I went and I said, praying for him and praying for him and praying for him. 
The following year, when I visited him, he gave me a check. And when I look at the check, I saw some six. I thought it was 60, 60 CDs. When I came home, it was $6,000. Five years later, it was Christmas time. He invited me, and when I went, he had a dinner in his house. And when I was about to leave, he threw a key, a car key to me. And he said, Bishop, that car outside there is your Christmas gift. Brand new car. And when he gave me the receipt of the car, it was over $30,000. I'm telling you. $30,000. He bought that car cash and gave it to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are serving the living God. We are serving a powerful God. We are serving an awesome God. We are serving a unique God. It is God who giveth power to get wealth. So I have not come to your home to get your money, but I have come to your home to release you from poverty. Poverty. Why? Because Jesus Christ endured poverty on the cross so that you and I can share his wealth. You are living on credit cards. God didn't create you to live on credit cards. God created you as an independent personality to dominate this earth, to excel in whatever you do. God said, and he gave us legal dominion over everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus bore our shame that we must receive his glory. You will never be put to shame, I prophesy to you. Even right now, I could see the glory of God coming upon you right now. And Jesus endured our rejection that we might be accepted. People might reject you. Friends might reject you. But God has accepted you right now. If only you will repent and receive him into your heart. He's faithful and just to forgive you all your sins and cleanse you. This Tuesday, 7 p.m., come to church. This Sunday, 10 a.m., come to church. We meet twice a week. Tuesday, 7 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. Very soon, the credits will come in. Uh, come in. Call me right now, and I'll pray with you. Close your eyes wherever you are, and let me pray for you. Makata, makata, yaba, baba, baba, hey, Lord God, may you heal these saints. May you prosper them. May you take them out from this calamity. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing a change into their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Call me right now, 718-496-3455. 718-496-3455. Call me right now and I'll respond to your call. Love you. Bye-bye. Friend, I'm your host, Bishop David Manu. I thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast and uh, listening to this word. I believe you are blessed. Uh, I just had only 28 minutes to speak with you. And I want to meet you personally so that we can speak at length. We are located at 1877 Bathgate Avenue here in the Bronx, between East Tremont and 176th Street. 1877 Bathgate, between East Tremont and 176. And you may reach me at 718-496-3455. 718-496-3455. You can call me 24-7. I'm at your disposal. We have so many series of teachings on YouTube. www.youtube.com slash powerhouse main VXNY. You can go on YouTube and listen to many of our teachings. You can also go to our website, www.powerhouseministries.tv. But this Sunday, I'm inviting you. We meet twice a week. Every Sunday, 10 a.m. And Tuesday is when we have our prayer, Bible studies, and deliverance. Every Tuesday, the house 
you could see the anointing. People come from New Jersey, Manhattan, Brooklyn, here in the Bronx, and other parts of the borough, to come and receive the blessings of God. This Tuesday, 7 o'clock, I'm, I'm inviting you. This Sunday, 10 a.m., I'm inviting you. See, God is mobilizing eagles together. Come, and your life will never be the same. Call me right away. The operators are waiting. 718-496-3455. Powerhouse Ministries, Incorporated. 1877 Bathgate Avenue. I thank you so much for watching this broadcast. May the Lord bless you. May he fortify you. And may he show his face upon you. But I want to see you this Sunday and pray for you. Are you sick? Are you troubled? Are you worried? This Sunday, I want to see you. When you come, you see ladies and gentlemen who are filled with the power of God. Praying, interceding for families, interceding for this nation. 718-496-3455. We meet two times in a week. Sunday, 10 a.m. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Prayer meeting. Come. God bless you. Sure, sure. I'm ready.